Welcome back to a very quick installment of Julian's Random Projects. I just wanted to update folks on the latest addition uh, to my long list of projects to get through. Keeping with the random theme, we're uh, back on cars, this time an MG Midget. I had one previously uh, that I didn't do a lot of videos on, and by a lot, I mean, I don't think I did any. Uh, you might have seen it in the background. Uh, and after I got that one uh, fully restored, I moved it along because I've, I've only got the one bay in here uh, to be working on car projects. So once they're done, I'll drive them for a little bit, but then th they're off. As you guys know, I was interested in converting the uh, one of the Porsches that I had to electric, and I abandoned that because it, at the time it seemed way too expensive to uh, to convert uh, and keep the same kind of performance. So I started looking for something lighter, smaller, uh, and this this midget popped up. It's a great example of a midget. Um, I've got the hood off because it was like dented in in one corner, and uh, when, when you're messing with these cars, it's it's best just to take the hood off if you're going to be in the engine bay for quite a while. So a couple bolts and uh, toss it on the side of the house. Uh, I lucked out. I probably would have bought it even if it wasn't in this nice a condition. And you're thinking, nice a condition? What the? What is he talking about? Nice a condition. I mean, it's a 1969 car that got parked in 1983 and wasn't driven. It's just sat in some old timer's garage, and uh, he always had the intention of uh, fixing it up. And, and you know that because uh, in it. There's just um, part after part and all the documentation and books to fix it. And um, here's a box of parts. All right, it sounds like the air conditioner's kicked on, so we'll, we'll try and make this quick. Uh, again, more, just a bunch of boxes of parts, um, carburetors, carburetor rebuild kits. Um, and here I got like br brand new uh, tail lights for this thing and O-rings for some bit or other I mean, who knows extra distributor caps you name it so yeah just a ton of parts uh, if you wanted to keep the original uh, internal combustion engine uh, looking at the condition of this thing I'm confident I could get it up and running again I started to take apart the carburetor uh, just as a part of a troubleshooting and you know checking the points and uh, checking for oil it doesn't have an oil uh, plug for some weird reason Maybe it fell out, who knows? Maybe it's the reason it's not running, I don't know. Um, these are all adjusted funky and when I started taking them apart, I found that the, the needle that goes down in there that restricts the um, air fuel mixture or ad adjusts it, because it's like a tapered needle, uh, it was bent, it's like curved, you know? Yeah, so, some guys have that problem. Uh, it's, both of them are like that and that happens when people take these out, uh, you know, they're sitting there, they're working on these things and I mean, maybe it happened like that when he yanked on it. This one, here we go. Oh my god. Oh, it's spring or th sprung. It's never gonna go back together. Uh, but this piston inside of here is uh, oil filled and uh, apparently a common mistake when folks are tuning this is they take this whole assembly and they set it down somewhere. When they set it down somewhere it bends uh, it bends that brass uh, rod there and that ends up setting this thing up for failure and it's it's never gonna it's never gonna ride right in here um, my guess is that's probably what happened might have been what the uh, the reason this thing got parked back in the 80s God only knows uh, but I kind of don't care <laughs> um, I'll make this video quick in the, the next uh, video I'm gonna try and get this thing started not to drive it around or anything, although I would, but it needs brakes and needs a bunch of other stuff. But um, if I can get this thing to turn over, even for a minute, when I yank it out, I'll be able to sell it uh, to some other MG enthusiast as a, a quote-unquote running engine, or I would say at least it, it ran, it turned over um, on a, you know, before I yanked it out. So that would be ideal. It'll at least help to reduce the cost of this EV conversion. So if you're interested in MGs, old MG midgets, or you like things that have uh, cute little bug-eyed uh, headlights like these, or you're interested in EV conversions, stick around. You'll see a couple updates from this thing. Uh, again, it's a beautiful example, like zero rust in this thing. I mean, is it old? Yeah, but like all the typical spots that you that MGs rust out right here where water collects, nothing. Um, I'd show you the underside, it's completely rust free. Uh, the only rust I've been able to find in it is like what I would call surface rust or, hmm, not even that's paint. Uh, yeah, here, here you go. Like, 
where there's a, a chip in the paint all the way gouged, you know, gouged down to bare metal. There's rust there, but it's like, it's still solid metal. I mean, I've seen some MGs where all of this is just completely, you know, put your finger through it, kind of rusted out. And this just has this like subtle little patina to it. Um, I mean, hell, when I'm, when I'm, once I've got it converted, like you don't, I'm not gonna go cleaning it up or painting it now uh, because I'm gonna be wrenching on it while we try and throw a, an electric motor and battery pack and motor controller and stuff like that in here. So um, when I'm done, uh, I might just clean it up. Who knows? I'm, uh, I'm crazy and slash lazy. I might just leave it like this. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how much these things can clean up. But um, if you're interested, you know, thumbs up for all the uh, the thick ass dust and the uh, the kitty cat prints. And stay tuned for more random projects. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough over and out, over and out.